Hello and welcome to the lecture series on theory of probability. In the last class, we have discussed the, the concept of fundamental principle with some numericals on that. Now, today we will be discussing the concept of permutation. Okay. Now, what is actually a permutation? Now, basically, you see by, by definition, if you go by the bookish way of defining, then permutation is the different arrangement that can be made of a given set of things by taking some or all of them at a time. See, I take a very simple example. Let's say I have uh, 40 books, okay? I have 40 books, okay? And I have a shelf that can accommodate 20 books, okay? That can accommodate 20 books, right? Now, uh, the idea is that I have to select any 20 books in a very random manner and I have to arrange them on the shelf which can accommodate 20 books, right? Now, uh, now how we can do it actually? Now, once we, now there are two ways, see two things we are performing. The first thing that we are performing is that we are making a selection of those 20 books from 40 books because we are selecting any 20 books in a very random manner and then we are arranging those 20 books in a shelf which can accommodate 20 books. Now, permutation is basically the arrangement of these 20 books, the arrangement that takes place okay, is actually what is mean by permutation. So, permutation means the arrangement of n things by taking let us say all at a time or you may take r at a time, so whatever it is. So, this 20 books that I am arranging on a shelf can be done in a number of ways. So, how we can find that, that will come to in the next discussion, but the main idea of permutation is basically it is arrangement, arrangement of n things okay, by taking all at a time or by taking some of them at a time. So, that is the main concept of permutation. Now, let us say, uh, now how we come to this concept of this permutation, we, 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 we take up uh, the most uh, uh, basic definition, let us say we have n things, okay. Let us say we have n things and I want to arrange this n things by taking r at a time, okay. I want to arrange this n things by taking r at a time, okay, r at a time. So, I want to arrange n things by taking r at a time, now how we can do it? Now, this concept of arranging n things by taking r at a time is exactly same by filling up r different boxes with n different things as simple as that. So, in how many ways we can do that? That we have to think because we have learned the concept of the fundamental principle of permutation and combination. So, we will be able to answer this question. So, let us say we have r boxes, let us say this is the box 1, we just draw our row with and th let us say box 1, box and let us say this is box r. So, this is box 1, this is box 2, this is box 3, box 4 and this is the rth box because I am trying to find out the arrangement of n things by taking r at a time means actually filling up r blank boxes by n different things, right. Now, since I have n things in my hand, I select the first box, right. Now, the first box uh, in how many ways I can fill up the first box. Now, I can fill up the first box in n ways because I have n things in my hand. So, I can fill up the first box in n ways, right. Now, once I fill up the first box in n ways, okay. So, before filling up the second box, I have how many things in my hand? I have n minus 1 things in my hand, n minus 1 thing because one of the thing has been inserted in the box 1. So, I have n minus 1 things in my hand by which I can fill up the second box. So, by the previous logic once again, I can fill up the second box in n minus 1 ways. Right? So, I can fill up the second box in n minus 1 ways, I can fill up the first box in n ways. Now, my question is then in how many ways I can fill up the first two boxes with n things? Now, that is the question. Now, that will come exactly using the multiplication rule of permutation. Right? So, you see you can fill up the first box in n ways that I have told you and you can fill up the second box in n minus 1 ways. Now, you see what is happening is now I am asking the question then how many ways you can fill up both the boxes that is box 1 and box 2 and that is very simple. Why? Because you have you have filled up the first box in n, n ways. Now, for each one of those n ways of filling up the first box, there are n minus 1 ways of filling up the second box. Therefore, the total number of ways of filling both the box will be straight away n into n minus 1 which I have just explained in the previous day. Okay. So, n into n minus 1 is the total number of ways of filling the first two boxes. Right? Now, once I have filled, filled the second box by a particular thing, I have n minus 2 things left in my hand. Again, by the, by the previous logic, okay, we, we have n minus 2 ways of filling the third box. But, 
if I want to find out that in how many ways I can fill up the first three boxes, box 1, box 2 and box 3 with n things, then again I will use the fundamental uh, principle of permutation that is n, so it is n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 because n minus 2 is the number of ways I can fill up the box 3. Okay, so and we have already found out that n into n minus 1 is the number of ways of filling the first two boxes. So, the total number of ways of filling the first three boxes will be n into n minus 1 into n minus 2. And in this way, it continues because since I have to fill up the fourth box, so fourth box will be n minus 3 ways of filling it. So, therefore, the number of ways of filling the fourth box, total number of ways of filling the fourth box, first, second, third and fourth box simultaneously will be n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into n minus 3. So, this is continued like this, okay, this is continued like this since I have to go to the rth box because I have to fill those r boxes with n different things. So, so it will continue like this, then it will reach up to the rth box. So, what should be the, the number of ways for the rth box? Now, you see, look here, when you are in the first box, it is n. So, we can write this as n minus 0, right? When we were at the, at the second box, the number of ways was n minus 1. So, we can write this as n minus 2 minus 1. Okay, we can write this. When we were at the third box, okay, it was n minus 2 ways, which we can write as n minus 3 minus 1, because third box 3 minus 1. So, therefore, when we are at the rth box, it will be n minus r minus 1 straight away. Okay, so n minus r minus 1 is the number of ways that you can fill up only the rth box. Therefore, the total number of ways of filling those r boxes with n dissimilar things, or okay, will be it will be n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 dot 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 into n minus r plus 1 that is it. So, this is actually the total number of ways by which you can arrange n things by taking r at a time which is exactly the same concept of filling up r different boxes with n things. So, this n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into n minus r plus 1 is actually denoted by a symbol which we all know it is n p r it is called n p r. NPR, P stands for the word permutation. So, NPR actually symbolically means the number of ways of arranging N things by taking R at a time. So, this is your NPR, right? Now, this is a, a case where R was said to be less than or equal to N. This is a case obviously R is less than or equal to N, R cannot be more than N. But it at times R can be equal to N, that means I may be interested of arranging N things by taking all at a time, okay, I may be interested in finding that. So, in that case, so what I do is that if I put r equal to n, if I put r equal to n in this result, I will basically get the number of ways of arranging n things by taking all at a time. Okay, so, in place of r, if I put n, because n p r was coming out to be n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 dot 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 n minus r plus 1. So, if I want to find an arrangement of arranging n things by taking all at a time, I simply I put r equal to n. I simply put r equal to n, right? If I put r equal to n, then my symbol becomes n p n and that results into this n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 and you put r equal to n, n minus n cancels is 1. So, that, that means it turns out to be the product of the first n natural numbers because n is a natural number here. So, which we normally denote by the symbol factorial n. So, n p n happens to be factorial n. So, that means factorial n in permutation means the number of ways of arranging n things by taking all n at a time or all of them at a time n p n which is factorial n. Okay. N p r means the number of ways of arranging n things by taking r at a time. Okay. Now, since n p n is factorial n which I have just now told as factorial notation, there is a way of writing this n p r. We can write this n p r in the factorial notation. Okay, so we have told that is uh, factorial n is turning out to be n p n. That is factorial n stands for the number of ways of, of arranging n things by taking all n at a time. Now, can we write this n p r in terms of the factorial notation? Because we have just now found out n p r is coming out to be this n into n minus one into n minus two dot dot, dot n minus r plus one. Now, this uh, can be written in the factorial notation easily. How we can write it? Because we can write this as as equal to See, we can write this as n, n factorial divided by n minus r factorial. 
we can write this as n factorial by n minus r factorial okay as per the factorial notation the product of the first n natural number so if you cancel this n minus r factorial from the numerator denominator of n factorial you will be left with n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 up to n minus r plus 1 so what what happens eventually is that that my npr stands uh, uh, stands out to be something like this so my npr becomes equal to n factorial by n minus r factorial that is the formula that we use to calculate or find out the number of ways of arranging n things by taking r at a time which is factorial n divided by n minus r factorial now some two particular cases that might arise the two particular cases that might arise which uh, i should say, uh, say that is if i put say case 1 if i put say r equal to 0 if i put r equal to 0 what happens if i put r equal to 0 my left hand side is np0 and my right hand side is n factorial by n factorial so n factorial n factorial cancels and i get this so therefore a point to be noted that np0 is always equal to 1 that is the number of ways of arranging n things by not taking any one of them at a time so 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 obviously there is only one way you can do it and that is n that's why np0 is coming out to be 1 second thing is uh, a very interesting thing actually the second one which i'm going to say here is very interesting that if i put r equal to n over here if i put r equal to n instead of putting r equal to 0 if i now put r equal because r can be n r can be n so in that case we get npn to be equal to n factorial by 0 factorial you see n factorial by 0 factorial now npn we know is equal to factorial and just now we have proved it npn is factorial n so that means so this implies that n factorial will be equal to n factorial by 0 factorial right so n factorial cancels and this gives a result that 0 factorial is 1 0 factorial though has no uh, meaning but still for uh, we we assume factorial 0 to be equal to 1 for further calculation so these are the two results that we easily get okay from the concept of this npr which says that number of ways of arranging n things by taking r at a time so np0 is 1 and factorial 0 is equal to 1 so this is all for today in the next class we'll be going into the concept of restricted permutations thank you